In this guide, we will follow the steps in the documentation to create and deploy an AI project using BrainBuild for Atrios. This will include everything from preparing datasets to evaluating and exporting the results, and finally deploying them to a Raspberry Pi AI camera. In my project, what I'd like to do is check the solder points on my boards. So I have a folder that is full of good solder points, as well as bad points. You can kind of see in some of these, there's a little bit of solder on one. Uh, we have some where the actual board is a little bit blurry. Some where the board is actually missing something and some where the actual board is missing. So we're gonna use this data to train our brain so that it can recognize these different pieces and classify them. We're gonna call our project done. Now, if this is your first time creating a data set, you will see an interface like this. For us, we're gonna create our first one now. So we took a quick look at the data for our project so let's call our data set solder point classification data because we want to classify our data as good, bad, black, etc. Now, when it comes to model types, we have a few to choose from here. The first type is the anomaly recognizer. This model type has the ability to classify whether an image is normal or has an anomaly. But for our case, we are going to choose the classification model. It can analyze an entire or partial image and categorize it into one of the defined classes. Okay, let's click Create Dataset. We're now ready to upload our first dataset. I'm going to go ahead and click on Upload Data. So let's go ahead and pick Dynamic Training and Validation Sets. Okay, now it's time to actually upload your data. So we have two options for how you can do this. One is a file-based upload. And with this upload scenario, what you will do is you find the files that you want to upload. Select as many as you want, click the open, and then what you have to do is give it a manual label. So in this case, it was bad, so I would give it the label of bad. But to make things a little easier, we also have a folder-based upload. Now in our case, you can see that we have all of our data, and the folder names, in this case, will be our labels. So what I will do is go ahead and compress this into a zip file, and then, we can use this zip file to allow Brain Builder to do the labeling for us. Okay, and let's name this our solder data. And now let's go ahead and grab this and click Start Upload. All right, now that we're finished uploading our data and classifying it, we can see that Brain Builder has built our labels. And then what we're able to do is click through each piece. And once we do that, Brain Builder shows how it is evaluating the predictions, with the top one being bad in this case. Now we can go and evaluate our learning classifier. We also want to take a look at our brain score. In general, we would like our brain score to be great. And in this case, it looks like we do have a great brain score. That means that when we actually get this onto the device, we're going to have a better likelihood of getting the results that we want. 99% precision, accuracy, recall, all this looks great. Another thing that we can do with Brain Builder is build a static classifier. And this is going to really enhance our brain in this case, though, I think we're going to go ahead and move on to testing. What we would preferably do is grab some files that we did not train on to see how well Brain Builder can do interpretations on new data. And then once we see how well it does with the test data, we can tweak settings to see what we need to improve. I'm going to take an image from the good data set and then we'll see how Brain Builder classifies it. And it classifies it as good, which is great. 
you have the option to load a folder of zip and it will classify all the items or you can drag multiple items onto the stage to do testing. Okay, at this point, our brain is looking really good. We have a really good brain score and our numbers here look really good. So now we're ready to move on and build our static classifier. The static classifier is going to allow you to adjust the processing time and the tolerance for false positives. You have a few options for doing that. In most cases, you can pick balanced. In our case, the default settings will work just fine. So we'll go ahead and build our static classifier. All right, now that we've built our static classifier, we can begin the process of evaluating the static classifier. So this shows us the images that we've trained, the options that we used, and it shows the accuracy uh, in our static classifier. I think at this point, this all looks really good. So let's go ahead and start the process of exporting our brain so we can then transfer it to the Raspberry Pi. And we clicked download brain, and now we will download our zip file and we'll take this zip file over to the Raspberry Pi so then we can start preparing it uh, using the IMX Tools Packager. Okay, now we have our data moved over to the Raspberry Pi. This is our classification data export. And we are going to start the process of using the IMX Tools Packager to package this into a format that works on the Raspberry Pi and then pushing it to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is unzip our data. So I'm gonna do everything right here in the File Explorer, hopefully to make things a bit easier. Let's go ahead and extract this here. Now, when we extract this, there will be a lot of files but the file that is important to us in this situation is the one named after our data set. So what we wanna do is go ahead and extract this. And what I'm going to do is copy this because when you extract this, it actually just ex extracts it into the root folder. For purposes of this demo, I'm going to use a folder so that we can see the data that was extracted. Right. And if we go into this file, we have a few files that are important to us. Uh, one is the packerout.zip and one is the labels.txt. Now, if we go back to the documentation, on the Raspberry Pi, of course, you would have installed your IMX 500 tools. I've already done this step. Uh, you would have installed all of the PyCam libraries, uh, which I've already done. And in this case, we're gonna clone the model zoo repository, which I have also already done here. The model zoo repository, it's just a sample to show you how to use the Raspberry Pi AI camera, how to push and how to receive the results. And I have the model zoo application already installed here and extracted. So if we go back to the documentation, it tells us that we need to take a look at our packer out.zip file and then we need to convert it to a network.rpk file. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and copy this line right here. And then we'll go back to our Raspberry Pi. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and open this folder in a terminal. And I should be able to just paste in that line because we are now here with our packer out.zip file. Then we'll go ahead and let that export. And we will see that we now have our network.rpk file. So now that we have converted this to a format that should work on the Raspberry Pi AI camera, we'll now go and push this to the AI camera. 
Now this is just telling you to change to the directory that, uh, because we're running a classification model, to the classification directory. And then we're going to run this code right here. So what we need to do first is, uh, you don't have to copy these files into the directory, but for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do, uh, this is our model zoo directory. I am going to go ahead and copy the network.rpk file and the labels.txt file. These are the two files, the network.rpk and the labels.txt file. These are the two files in our classification model that we need to push the code uh, to our Raspberry Pi AI camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these two files right into here. And again, to make things easier for this demo, I'm gonna open this in a terminal. All right, so we're now going to paste in this line onto our Raspberry Pi AI image camera. Oh, let's, we wanna do paste, copy. And then let's paste this line in. And now this process will push the model to the Raspberry Pi. AI camera. Again, this is the beauty of this system because now the inferencing will take place on the camera instead of on your Raspberry Pi board, giving you the option to have a lower powered Pi, have a Pi that doesn't have as much power. But you can still do AI inferencing because all the inferencing is taking place on the actual camera giving you the ability to run AI on a Pi Zero, for instance, to be very useful in remote use cases. All right, and here we are. Now you can see what's going on is that uh, we have several results that we've trained it on and it's giving us the numbers on each of the results to be trained on. So this should be in good working order. And this is telling me that this board looks good. It's got a very high number uh, on the good statistic. So I think this is a really good result. So as we mentioned in this video, we've covered everything from initial brain builder setup all the way to pushing down to the Raspberry Pi AI camera. I hope that you all enjoy using this system. Please let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.